Hi there, Dr. Tanzavati here. So in this video, we're going to go over the post-operative instructions for CO2 laser resurfacing. CO2 laser resurfacing is a very messy um, procedure in the fact that after the surgery, you're going to have blistering, possibly some bleeding, crusting, and it is very messy because the amount of aquaphor you have to apply on the skin. So let me go over some of, some of what you're going to expect after the procedure. The day of the procedure, when you leave, you won't have any pain. You'll just have a lot of um, swelling starting to kick in, and it may feel hot, but there is very little pain. The burning sensation will come later. So about six to eight hours after the procedure, closer to the evening, you're going to start feeling a burning sensation. That's also when some of the numbing medicine is wearing off. So that's when you're going to want to start Tylenol for pain, or if you have, if we've prescribed it to you, we'll take Celebrex as well for the pain. You don't need narcotics, and many of my patients do not need narcotics for this procedure. So I would avoid that because it will make you sleepy and groggy. And the instructions for post care are important that you're doing this every four hours. So start after the procedure, you're gonna start two hours after, I'm confusing you here, but follow with me. Two hours after the surgery, you're gonna start by doing the first vinegar soak. The vinegar soak requires you to dilute vinegar in a uh, one, um, the, uh, I have to review it myself, one teaspoon of distilled vinegar. This is your regular table vinegar, white vinegar that you get at the store. And you're gonna mix that in two cups of water. Um, what I would also recommend is put, putting some ice in there after you've done the mixture. You're gonna take a washcloth or a baby washcloth, which is, I recommend the baby washcloth over this, and you're gonna, because the baby washcloth is, is thin, it's a thinner material, and you're gonna be able to put it in the dilute water vinegar mixture, and you're gonna be able to wring it, and then you're gonna apply that over your face. You're gonna leave that on for about five minutes. It's gonna feel very nice and comfortable, particularly if you put ice in that solution so that it's nice and cool. Then you're gonna leave it after five minutes, you're gonna remove the cloth. Do not rub when you take it off. Don't move it. You're just gonna peel it off and it's gonna take some of the aquaphor ointment that's already on your skin. Or if it doesn't and there's a thick layer, I still want you to go ahead and put on a new layer of aquaphor. You're gonna use uh, tongue blades or uh, Q-tips but don't use your hands into the ointment jar because otherwise you're just gonna put more bacteria in there. Make sure to wash your hands before you do this too so everything's nice and clean. But after the vinegar soak, the vinegar's purpose is to decrease the pH on the level of the skin so it, it decreases the risk of a bacterial infection. And then you're gonna put the aquaphor ointment. So that's the first time that you start doing that is two hours after the surgery. Then you're gonna repeat that every four hours while awake. So that means if you're going to bed at 10 o'clock, you're falling asleep, don't even think about having to wake up at two in the morning. Just skip that two o'clock appointment. You're gonna wait until the next morning and start the vinegar soaks again. So you're not gonna need to wake up every four hours because that would of course take away from your sleep time. And that's important for recovery is getting enough sleep. The next thing that you're going to do is that um, uh, after the ointment is done, so day one, day two, day three, you're not going to notice much change in your skin. It's going to really start to crust. Um, you're going to see some yellow weeping on day one, but you're really not going to see anything peeling for at least three to four days, sometimes longer. The, the deeper the laser resurfacing treatment was done, the more uh, time it's going to take before you start seeing the crusting peeling away. And when that starts to happen, you'll see this pink, nice deep pink skin right underneath. That's when you know you've got new skin, healthy skin right underneath that. I'm not going to tell you when to stop. Um, you're going to have to just keep doing it until I see you in person in your uh, post-operative appointment. We will have scheduled your five day as well as a seven day and possibly a 10 day appointment to see your progress. And that way I can tell you accurately when to stop applying the ointment. Otherwise, 
keep doing it even if you see the deep pink skin because it's still fresh and fragile skin and you don't want to disrupt the surface of the skin because it's starting to have a thin layer of epithelium and if you scratch it it will bleed all right the other thing you might want to know is you want to avoid any hot water so if you're going to take a bath or a shower you can you know people ask about that you can start taking a shower a few days after the procedure that's on day two or day three you could start showering over but you want to use cold or lukewarm water don't use hot water as of course it will probably feel stingy when it goes over your skin the other thing you want to know is as you start to progress and more skin is showing, it's gonna to start to get itchy. So that itchiness is a normal, um, normal progress of healing, and that's a good sign. But if you get that itching and it's very unbearable, go ahead and get a Q-tip, put it in the ointment, apply a little pressure on the area where it's um, itching, and that should take away the itching. But if it's really diffuse around your whole face, then that's when you might need to use an antihistamine, preferably at night because that will help you go to sleep. But an antihistamine would be like your Benadryl over the counter. Um, when you do use that medication, uh, again, try to take it at night because during the day it may make you groggy. Um, and of course, we don't want you driving if that's the case too. Um, the the, if we are treating other areas, so other areas might be blending right onto the neck, I, I usually do not treat the neck, and that is also because the neck takes a long time to heal, and two, you don't see much changes to the neck. But rarely do I do that. But you will see extension of the treatment down onto the neck, and that area will be the last part to heal. It's the slowest part to heal, so if you start seeing that scabbing and peeling away, it will likely be around day seven to day 10, more closer to day 10 if you do see that. Um, avoid picking or um, peeling the skin before it's ready. So even though you see one and it's like ready to fall off, don't pick at it because if you pick at it, it will start to peel away stuff that's not ready to peel yet, and you could lead to scarring of the area. And one of the complications that can happen after laser resurfacing is scarring. And scarring can happen because the skin was not really fully healed yet and you've exposed it. So please avoid picking uh, or scrubbing at your face. Again, putting the washcloth when you do the vinegar soaks, you're gonna keep doing the vinegar soaks until I tell you you can stop. With the vinegar soaks, with the washcloth, of course, applying it gently and removing it gently. Um, drink lots of water because you will feel dehydrated. Um, you'll lose a lot of moisture from the skin because this is all healing and it's a controlled burn. So if you imagine a burn, if you've ever had a sunburn, it feels hot at the area. As long as you put aquaphor, it doesn't dry out, but you are still losing moisture. And so that's a good thing to make sure that you're drinking lots of water. You want to keep your head elevated for the first three days. So when you're propped up at night in bed, you want to lay pillows so your head is lifted and elevated. That's to allow the swelling to go down and you will get swollen. You'll notice it because not only do I notice in the face, most patients will tell me their lips swell out to, you know, as if you've had a couple of lip fillers or something like that. So you'll want to be aware of that, that your lips will swell, your lips will get bigger, we didn't do any injections to your lip from the procedure, but it's a normal process of healing after the CO2 laser. So swelling can increase after day two or day three, and so you'll want to keep your head elevated because that will help you uh, help the swelling to go down in your face. Of course, avoid direct sun exposure on the face. If you have to go out and the peeling hasn't completely uh, finished yet, you want to go out with a nice UP. Uh, SPF hat, one of those hats that has a 50 plus um, coverage. Uh, they sell them at Costco. There's also other sites. You can just Google it or look on Amazon. Of course, Amazon's a great source to look for that too as well. Um, and then uh, you're going to want to avoid dusty, dirty environments as well. That means, you know, if you're gardening in your backyard, if there's dust back there, if there's dirt, you want to avoid that. Um, some people live uh, with pets, and if there's a lot of uh, pet dander, you want to avoid that too because that can get sticky and stick onto the skin that's still healing, and that is as well dirty for the skin. 
Um, after about one week to 10 days, depending on how long it takes to, for everything to heal, that's when I'm gonna give you a go ahead. Once, every, once I've cleared you, you can go ahead and start applying sunscreen, and that SPF should be at least 30. Sunscreen that you wanna choose is something that has titanium dioxide or zinc oxide or the combination of both of those. Avoid those um, sunscreens that have any chemicals. So those will be ones that say avobenzone, oxybenzone, oxybutanine, um, uh, oxy whatever on the end. So those are the typical uh, chemical uh, sunscreens and you wanna avoid that. You wanna just use a nice physical barrier and that would be your mineral sunscreens that include zinc or titanium dioxide. You can go towards the um, kids section because usually they try to find something that's sensitive for, for baby skin and that usually works really well. Uh, I have some brands that I have recommended in the past and I'll post them up on this video as you can see as I'm talking but one of the ones I like is Badger which is an organic brand. Um, there's also um, there's also Australian Gold which I've used in the past as well. It's organic as well and in their children's line. Um, we also have uh, other ones like Coppertone carries one that is an all um, mineral based sunscreen. Um, you can use that. We also have one in our own line. My line has one specifically for the face and it is also a mineral sunscreen that has a tint to it. Tint is fine just know that tint is fine after these cases. It actually has another additive benefit by the tint. The melanin in the tint helps to block out the sun, sun's UV rays as well. Um, all right, besides that, uh, I'll also give you tips on when you can start applying makeup. You'll want to choose a makeup that has a green tint or has an ability to block out uh, the red color because you will have redness that can last a month or up to three months or even up to six months. For a CO2 laser resurfacing procedure, I can't guarantee how long that's going to take. Every person's different. Some people, it will take a few weeks. Some people will take a few months. So just know that you'll be wearing makeup that will try to help cover the redness in the first few months. So you wanna choose a makeup base um, there are some that we recommend, such as Sikapair is a great base. It's not a makeup, it's a base. So it has a green tint with a white chalky substance, so you can apply it and then put your own makeup over. The green covers the red in your color spectrum. The green will help block out the red from your skin. Another option that you have is called Oxygenetics and IT Cosmetics. Both of these, IT Cosmetics was created for, by the founder who um, had acne rosacea, and so she had redness, and that's a great line. The other line that I like is Oxygenetics, and Oxygenetics is made specifically for post-CO2 laser resurfacing. It is a little more pricier, and you won't be using it after this procedure is over, but it is a good one, and it's breathable. So even after the recovery, you can use it pretty early on, okay? So I hope that helps for what I've described. If you have any questions at all, this is this procedure, I do get a lot of questions. And if this video, as well as the other videos we provided, has not given you enough answers, please feel free to call us. And that's at 805-715-4996. Or reach us through the app, through the patient app. You're going to contact through the conversation. And you're going to text through patient care, and we should be able to answer your questions through there. Thanks for tuning in.